All right. It's Proverbs 4. I'm just going to look at some of the at the first section and not go into a whole lot of detail, but just a couple of interesting things that I noticed in these introductory verses. So in verses one through nine, Solomon begins this, hear, O sons, or hear, O children, depending on which translation you have. And he's talking about the instruction that his father gave him. And he says, O sons, in plural. And the things that he says here are abstract. Uh, like, um, see, where is it? Uh, Do not forsake wisdom and she will keep you. Love her and she will guard you. Uh, prize her highly and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. It's difficult to uh, quantify exactly what these benefits of wisdom are. I mean, we can imagine ways in which wisdom is an honor to somebody, especially to somebody in a in a royal house. Um, but it's pretty intangible. But the thing here that I thought is interesting is that it, it the first part is, oh, sons, that's the first address. And then the second one in verse 10 is here, my son. So in this top one, he's talking about the things that he learned from his father. And is he's passing this down, not just to Rehoboam or a particular son, but to all of his sons and to their descendants. And he's doing this. He's using what he has learned from his father as an example. So like saying, I got it from my father. Now I'm passing it down to my sons and you pass it down to your sons and so on. So he's not just talking about the children that he has right now, but all of the children who are to come, the children of his children. In verse 10, he's addressing a specific son. Now, of course, the, the wisdom that he's passing on applies to everybody, but he's probably specifically talking to Rehoboam, who is his chosen heir. Um, and the benefits here are much more tangible. Um, let's see if I can read some of these here. Um, you know, stay away from the wicked uh, because, you know, if you get involved with their schemes, you're going to get sucked into it. Um, it's going to be death because when you get involved with the wicked, they're going to be involved in crimes. They love the terrible things they do. So just don't hang out with them. Uh, very tangible kind of stuff. Notice particularly, particularly in verse three, he says, when I was a son with my father, tender, the only one in the sight of my mother. But the curious thing here is that Solomon was not an only child. He wasn't even a firstborn. Uh, we know that Bathsheba had at least four other sons. The first one died uh, when he was a child. And he had three older brothers named Shobab, uh, Shemaiah, or Shamua, depending on which book you're reading it in, and Natan. Uh, depending on whether you're reading in Chronicles or Kings or elsewhere, these names may be spelled a little bit differently, especially notice that Bathsheba here is spelled Batshua instead of Batsheva. It's almost the same. In fact, it might, it's probably spelled just a single letter off in Hebrew. I didn't really look at it. But Solomon is saying that he was the only one in the sight of his mother, even though he had three older living brothers. Solomon, I don't know if he was the youngest son of Bathsheba, whether he had any younger brothers. But just like Joseph and Jacob and Isaac, this is a younger son passing over his older brothers to inherit the, the family headship. And this thing, the only one in the sight of my mother, I doubt that it means that Bathsheba had disowned her other sons. She was probably treating him as her baby. And, you know, being the, the youngest out of six siblings, I understand exactly what that's like. All of my siblings would have thought that I was the only child because of the way that my mother treated me. Uh, and it's not that she didn't love her other children, but, you know, parents baby the baby. So I just thought it was interesting that these family dynamics come out in the way that he words this. This uh, passing wisdom on from generation to generation, it's a direct reflection of this commandment in Deuteronomy 4. 
Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. Whatever mistakes Solomon made, whatever sins he committed, he was at least trying to keep this one. He was trying to pass on the wisdom that David had taught him to his own children. Uh, see, trying to figure out where I am in my my slides here. Um, oh yeah, and the opposite. If you pass God's wisdom onto your children, they will tend to pass it onto their children. But if you don't, you end up like these other nations, the nations that God removed from the promised land. And so these nations feared Yahweh. And also, actually, these aren't the ones that God removed. These are the ones that came in later. That the Assyrians replaced the Israelites with. Sorry, getting my storylines mixed up. So these nations feared Yahweh and also served their carved images. Their children did likewise and their children's children, as their fathers did, so they do to this day. And these became the Samaritans. And this sets up the the conflict that we see in the first century between Yeshua and the uh, and the Samaritans, uh, not between Yeshua, but the Jews of Yeshua's day and the Samaritans. They were a mix of pagan nations and Israelites who had been left behind and were mixing God's religion with pagan religions. And whatever it is that you are valuing, whatever religion you are keeping, you're going to be passing that down to your children, even if you don't teach it explicitly. You know, Solomon explicitly taught his children to keep God's commandments. But in his own daily life, Solomon didn't always do that, and his children saw it. And so that tendency came out throughout Judah's history. The kings of Judah tended to be more righteous than the kings of Israel because at least they kept God's law and they, they learned from the prophets. But they also followed Solomon's example, and they didn't remove the high places, and they encouraged idolatry throughout the nation. And that is still the case all the way down to this day. The, the theological and philosophical heirs of Solomon and Judah have still are still mixing paganism with the true religion of God. <clears throat> 